We're uh, producing this uh, little short video for some of you who've had some questions about uh, ground fighting points in freestyle judo. And we're going to be covering that right now. And we've got uh, Derek and Dre here to, to work with us. Derek's in white, Dre is in blue. And we're going to talk about guard passing right now. We're getting past the legs. Uh, remember, you don't just have to be in a full guard to do this, and we'll discuss that a little later when we talk about leg scissors or half guard. So Derek is going to be working past uh, from the top. Just get a guard pass, past the legs, get past, and there we go. That is one point guard pass. So now the referee would call Osaikomi white in white and blue. He would call Osaikomi white, and we would time now for up to, up to 20 seconds. If he were to hold up to 20 seconds and keep that, then he does that, he gets four points for the hold down, and the referee would say, four points white, go for your submission. Now, it is incumbent upon the top grappler now in the white to go for a submission. In this case, he's rolling back to get a Jujigatami, and there he got it. So the Osai Komi then would lead to a submission technique, in this case, an arm lock. So that would be a series of a guard pass, points established with a pin, and then going for a submission. All right, let's talk about a half guard or leg scissors position. Sometimes this happens, it happens fairly often as you can see the leg position here. There we go, the guys are, yeah. All right, so we've got this position. Uh, Dre on the bottom in the blue has managed to get his leg and he's escaped from the hold, okay? Now, Derek's job is to try to get that leg free and when he does get that leg free, pops it free and if he, there we go, and he passes by the legs and by the hips. He has just secured one point for a guard pass from freeing his leg that is worth one point, and he has established an osaikomi. Sometimes, Derek, start about that again in the, um, the, the, the uh, leg scissors. Now, in some cases, he might pry this free and end up in a tate shihogatami or mount position. Pop that, and that's very common. And there he did the uh, guard pass, as it were, one point, osaikomi. The point is we're giving objective points for getting out of this hold. It is passing and controlling, getting past the hips and controlling. We're taking the opponent from a still rather even defensive but stable position to an unstable position and getting control over them. That's the point of a breakdown or guard pass. Okay, let's go from the bottom, a guard sweep or a rollover from the bottom. Okay, Dre will be doing it. Any type of sweep or a rollover, that's one point, and he, if he immediately establishes a pin, it's Osaikomi. He may or may not establish a pin immediately. There's another sweep, and there's Osaikomi. If he does it, if he just gets a like a rollover or a sweep from the bottom, but doesn't establish a pin, he just gets the point for, there you go, the, okay, boom, they're back into a scramble. He did get the point for the, uh, the sweep or the rollover from the bottom. So that's one point from the bottom, and in any way you roll them from the bottom. There we go. One point for that, and he pulled back into a back defensive. There was a position, guard position. It was a scramble again. Okay, another one is, uh, guys, can you do a like a spinning jujigatami? So the bottom guy is on the bottom. He does a spinning jujigatami, swings him over, rolls him over, and... He, he, he may be working for an arm lock if he got it that time, but that certainly was a breakdown because Dre on the bottom in the blue took Derek from a stable to an unstable position. That's the point of a breakdown. And there we have that. That is a legit breakdown. There's a question about that in the freestyle rules, and that is a point for a breakdown. Derek, can you do like a forearm near leg or Belton Nelson, something when he's on elbows and knees or flat? Okay, so if your opponent is on forearm, there's a forearm near leg, that's a definite breakdown, and he worked right into an immediate pin, Osaikomi. Okay, let's maybe a judo stack if he's flat. Okay, if they are flat, boom, pop them over. That is a good breakdown, that is worth one point, and he established a pin as well. If the bottom grappler stays hiding too long and doesn't engage and fight, that we consider that passivity. That's not good judo. So the bottom person wants to get to a better position and get established and get out of trouble, but the top person keeps riding him and controlling him. He's trying, we see he's trying, but if he just lays there and hides, we consider that passivity. Hey, Dre, go into chicken judo, would you? Boom, if he lays there and hides and does nothing to try to establish a better position or get out of it, the referee will give a warning for that, and if he stays there, he will get a penalty for non-combativity or passivity. Okay, and the top person is now, Derek's trying to work and trying to get a breakdown, as it were. 
So what we've covered here a bit, thanks guys. Also we have a question if a, an escape from a pin. Can, uh, Derek, why don't you have him pin you? Okay, and we have a, pin escapes are just pin escapes. Okay, we call Osaikomi, and if he gets out of trouble, boom, he's escaped. Or he may roll him over like a bridge and roll, you know, from a, from a case of Gatami or something. Yeah. He gets no points for the escape, but he has escaped. We give only points in freestyle judo for aggressive, assertive uh, judo moves. So an escape uh, gets you out of trouble. We, that's, we understand that, but you don't get points for getting out of trouble. Okay. So we've had some questions about these on ground fighting points. Uh, another thing, guys, let's do the, the, the one where you have to grab and attack. You can't just shoot in like in wrestling. Now remember, this is judo, very much judo. So you have to establish a grip first. And okay, looks like you didn't agree. Did, did you just shoot in? Oh, did you grab first? Okay, I didn't catch it on the camera. So let's say you have to get a grip first. There's his grip. He's got the gi. Then he shoots. That's legal. Okay, show a, show a shoot in wrestling that's illegal where you start from afar and just drop, dive in. That's not allowed. Okay, or Derek, drop in where they just hug the leg and just kind of want to, want to uh, you know, that, just hug like that. You've got to grab first, okay? We will say mate and explain to you what you did, give you a warning for doing that, and the next time you have to establish a grip. Now that's legal because he had a grip first, okay? Now, sometimes you have a grip and he may break it, but in the, in the process of the, of the movement, pop it free. Now see, but he disengaged, so now that was enough of an engagement. Pop free with one hand. You still have at least one hand where both hands were on him initially, and pop free, okay. Now see, well, that would be a, a close one to call, but he had enough space in it. We still wouldn't call that because that was still a shoot. So there, there has to be close, closeness in there. Generally keeping one hand on him, then shooting there, that was better, okay? So try to keep at least one hand on him as you shoot in or as you attack with the throw. So this makes double legs, single legs legal. And um, so basically you have to get a grip first initially, even if he breaks it quickly, then you can, uh, then you can hit it as long as the movement is continuous. That's, we're looking for continuous movement. So I hope we answered some of these questions and uh, we're doing this in preparation for our Freestyle Nationals March 30th, 2013 here in Kansas City, Missouri. Hope to see you there. Thanks a lot.